How do you get the most out of your plyometric training for jumps and sprints? That's what we're going to take a look at in this video. I've had quite a few questions on that particular subject through my various social media and on my Instagram account I've been doing a series of posts on plyometric training. So I'm going to answer some of the questions that have come up. Firstly, how can you tell if you're a quad dominant jumper and what are the pitfalls of being a quad dominant jumper for example? Well, a relatively easy way to determine whether you're a quad dominant jumper through plyometrics is to use a drop jump. Now, if you overly bend your knees on contact with the ground to power up, then the chances are you're more quad dominant. Also, you need to look at the ankle extension on the contact. That won't be so great in a quad dominant jumper. You may also be able to discern whether or not you initiate the movement first through your feet rather than through your quads. Obviously, a jump requires triple extension, so through the ankle, knee and hip, which is also important in terms of extension and improving jump power. But the quad dominant jumper will want to utilize their quads, their thighs, in order to generate in part the majority of the force. So you've got to start initiating the movement through your feet and also minimizing the contact angle so that the speed of the reaction is sharpened and your leg stiffness will develop accordingly. Research indicates that the optimum drop jump height for speed is around 40 centimeters and that the athlete should try to get off the ground as quickly as possible reacting to the contact with a stiff legged contact. As noted the quad dominant jumper would tend to want to yield a little bit more in order to impart more force to have more time to do so. So you should try to minimize that ground contact time and speed things up. Additionally doing focused exercises for the ankle joint plyometrically will also pay dividends and start to get the ankle joint to more fully contribute to the plyometric triple extension. Now in a post on Instagram I did say that not all jumpers are created equally. Some will be more elastic than others. This means that they will apply their force more slowly or slightly in milliseconds more slowly than somebody who has greater stiffness and quicker reactivity. So these types of jumpers often are more suited to triple jump as opposed to long jump and they may also be slower in terms of their sprinting ability. However, that doesn't mean to say that they should just go in one direction. If they do start to apply more force more quickly, then their sprinting should also improve, as well as their triple jumping, for example. So as a coach, it's all about working out what type of elasticity, power, leg stiffness your jumpers have and adapting your plyometric program to the specifics of those jumpers and their specific needs, their strengths and their weaknesses. So if I had a more elastic triple jumper I'd also be throwing in more stiff legged work in order to hopefully improve their sprint speed as well. Now of course there are a myriad of other training factors that can improve sprint speed but that's the equation that you've got to work through when coaching. You've got to look at how you can get the most from the various qualities that your triple jumper has and needs or long jumper to be the best at their event. So returning to the question that I posed at the start of this video, yes it is possible to change the way you impart force if you're a quad dominant jumper. Posterior chain development is also crucial for the quad dominant jumper and indeed all jumpers and sprinters as heel recovery is crucial for sprint speed and you need to have a balance between the quads and the hamstring muscles and glutes for example. It's crucial that you also are able to withstand force before you can return it. So in that respect drop and block jumps are crucial. Research with long jumpers and their takeoff indicates that the better, the quicker, the stronger the eccentric action on the board the more powerful the concentric 
return will be and therefore jump distance. Well I hope the information provided in this short video will help you understand how to adapt your jump training to how you express power and the type of jumper you are and the importance of not being just a quad dominant jumper i.e. being able to get more power from the ankle joint, the hip joint and also the posterior chain when it comes to creating force dynamically. I've also started to make a couple of videos on sports training and how to apply athletic training principles to those. The first one was on rugby training so do check that out. There is still a relevance for you track and field exclusive fans, guys, trainers, coaches as you'll see some of the drills that I use with the athletes in my training group being applied to rugby players. And so the fundamentals of speed and power and acceleration are equally applicable to rugby players as much as they are to athletes. So do check those videos out and that series when it goes online. Over the next few months I plan to make more focused videos on key aspects of plyometric training. So do look out for those. And if you have any specific questions on the subject matter of this particular one, then do leave your comments in the section below or contact me through my other social media. As usual, thanks for watching and do subscribe to the channel and turn on the bell notification icon so that you'll be made aware of when I upload new content. And please do give this video a thumbs up, a like. Freelap have just launched a new piece of kit. Now, this looks like the TX Junior Pros, the pyramids, yellow pyramids, that record the times as the athletes pass them. But what this one does, it actually gives you the command on your marks and sets the athlete off with a bang. So it emits the sounds through a speaker built into it. It gives you a 10 second lead in once you press the set button and then randomly within I think a two and a half second period, the gun will fire through the device to set you off. Now that triggers the system. So it's going to be a very accurate way to measure starts. If you want to find out more, then do get in contact with me.